Hey guys, so what are, we, what are we going to build today? We are going to build our own Amazon product research assistant using NNN, Keepa API, Telegram for notification, and our own custom GPT. So you'll say, well, I can directly go to Keepa and run my ASIN check, use the query endpoint, and find all the information about the ASIN. Very true. But what we have done is enriched that data with our own custom GPT that not only tells you the launch risk but also scores the profitability factor and the differentiation angle that you can use to actually build a product that will sell better than the others that are selling in the category with enough differentiation built so you can piggyback on the momentum of an existing product. Uh, private label sellers will absolute, absolutely love what we have built. So uh, let's look at the automation and see what it looks like. I'm going to share my screen and show you the notification that you will receive in Telegram, be it on your desktop or your mobile device. So here's the notification that you will receive. Like I was saying, we have enriched the data with our own differentiation angle launch risk, conclusion tells you exactly what we think, well, what the AI thinks, and these basically these are the filters that you send in. So without further ado, let's dive in, show you the automation. Let me share. All right, here's my head in screen. I've already built the product opportunity finder. I'm gonna just run it and show you what it does and how it works. So it's going to call Keep API and pass the data over to our custom GPT. The GPT will do its thing. And then in the end, what I'm expecting is a notification from Telegram. And there you have it. So how about we build a new one from the ground up? I'm going to create a new workflow in my personal time this time. I'm going to call this my own product research assistant. Okay, before we begin, we need to call Keepa API and we need to send some filter parameters into Keepa. So in order to do that, I'm going to use a set node. And I already have the JSON built. And if you guys want access to, the, to all the code, just like, subscribe, and comment. And I will gladly share the entire code. Now you can see that I'm using category ID 284507, which happens to be home and kitchen, one of the top selling categories on Amazon. Now the category and the corresponding numbers is public information. You can find it anywhere. For the purpose of this demo, I'm using min price and max price between 15 and $50, max reviews. Minimum rating, 3.5. Why? Because we not we want to build enough differentiation in the product when we go sourcing. So we are looking for a product rating between 3.5, maximum of four. And it, anything above that, it's a very it's a very hard to build differentiation. And the results per page we want is 50. I'm going to name this filter. Feel free to name it whatever you want. Now there's one more step before we call Keeper. Keeper's query endpoint wants a selection JSON object. JSON, uh, for those who don't know what it is, it stands for JavaScript Object Notation and it's standard communication for APIs to communicate with each other. I'm gonna highlight this and move it to the left so I have room to work. So the next thing I'm gonna add a code node here, we will create the JSON object that we will send to Keeper. Here's my JSON object. Just remember, the Keeper key and the selection will be injected into the next step, which is which will be the HTTP request that we made to, that we will be making to Keeper. So we will be referencing these parameters in the next step. I'm going to call this code formatting 
or rather request. All right, now we are ready to make the keeper request. For that, I'm going to use an HTTP request node. Leave it as get. That's what we want. And we will be making a request to the query endpoint. And yes, we want to send parameters. And the first thing I'm going to do is send in the domain ID. For North America, it is one. If, you, if you're um, in a different part of the world, you can send in a different domain ID. And here, I'm going to remember, I'm going to reference the parameters from the previous step. And the way you do that in NADN is you use these double brackets and then you use the dollar sign, JSON, period, and the name of the variable. Okay, it says we have to execute the previous node, which we will do in a second. Now I'm going to add one, one more. Remember the selection object from the previous step. Same thing, just on um, the selection. I'm going to call this our keeper. Okay. Now the keeper step should be good. Let's go in and check. And yes, it is. So let's test this. And voila, we got a response from keeper. Now, what we want to do for the subsequent steps is we want to format this ugly JSON into something that humans can understand. So I'm going to go back to the and drop in a small piece of code. And I will explain to you what that code does. I'm going to add a code node. Now here's something different that you will see. You see this line? Cause top asins equals so this this piece of code, what it is doing is taking the set of asins that come back from keeper in the previous step and sending only one of those, the top one asin to the subsequent steps because this is for uh, this is a demo so I didn't want to send the entire fifty asins over to GPT and expend all my tokens so if you want to send everything to the subsequent step all you have to do is get rid of this line or if you want to use a different number if you want to send five ASINs to GPT all you have to do is change from one to five I'm going to change it back to one I'm going to test this step so I should get only one ASIN all right we got one ASIN um, I'm going to name this step as limit GPT request. I'm going to go back to the canvas. Now, I ran into a gotcha when I built this automation with GPT and NNN. It seems like the parameter in the request body, which is the actual prompt to GPT, it cannot understand the JSON values that I'm work, working with in this automation. So I had to add an intermediate step. Now there may be a better way of doing this or a different way of doing it, but this was the most expedient. So I'm going to go in and add a set node and I'm going to add two variables here. The first, the, the first one is the ASIN and like in the previous steps, we're going to use JSON ASIN. I will also add another field called raw ASIN. And the reason is the way my prompt is set up. It needs these two variables. You may build it a, a different way which, where you may not need it, but the way I built the prompt, it, it needs these two variables. 
I'm going to test this step. Fine. So now that this works, I'm going to name this uh, GPT. And now the actual step of making an HTTP, HTTP request to open API. Open API. Sorry, I keep on saying open API. In this case, we want to call the post endpoint and we're going to call api.openai.com forward slash v1 forward slash chat forward slash completion. Now we want to send headers. What headers? Um, it needs authorization header, which basically you're sending OpenAI the key as a way to authenticate your request. And the way it this needs to be formatted is bare space and the actual key that you get from OpenAI. I'm going to just copy paste here. I'm going to add, add, I need to send a body, which is at the actual prompt. And the way you send it is in draw body and use application forward slash JSON as the content type and then the actual prompt. Like I said, if you want access to the code, the prompt, like and subscribe and comment. Drop a comment in the comment section and I will gladly share the code with you. Okay, I think we are ready to test this. Let's see if it works. It worked. Now, before we send it over to Telegram or share it in an email to ourselves or send it to a Slack channel, we probably should format it a bit better than this raw JSON. So for that purpose, I'm going to add an intermediate step here. And this time I'm going to add a code node. So all, it, all this code is going to do is format it in a, in, a, in a way that we can understand what it actually means. And you always change this, not always, but for this case, you change it to run for once for each item. And the squiggly, ugly squiggly under the JSON will go away. Let's test this. Okay. Now all we need to do is hook up Telegram and we are done. So I'm going to use Telegram. We want to send a text message. And Telegram, in order for you to communicate via Telegram, you need your chat chat ID. So you drop in the chat ID here. And here you will create an expression that actually formats the JSON data so that the data that you get is well formed. Okay. Now we can test the entire flow that we built. Calling Keeper, calling GPT, and voila. So now we got the notification. You see this? Looks beautiful, doesn't it? So that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, and drop a comment in the comment section below so I, I can share the code with you. Also, um, we posted a video about an Amazon Keeper price tracker earlier in the channel, which notifies you almost instantly when the price of an ASIN drops below your, below your target price. Like, subs like su subscribe, drop a comment, encourage us to build us more videos like this, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.